After weeks of programming, calibrating, and testing, the iPhone 15 Pro Max battery test is finally here, where it's going head-to-head -head against its biggest competitor in the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Taking a look at the spec sheets, the iPhone has that all-new A17 Pro chip, which is based on a 3 nanometer process compared to the Galaxy's 4 nanometer chip, which in theory should make it more efficient. On top of that, the iPhone has a bigger battery than it did last year at 4,441 milliamp hours, but of course, that's still way smaller than the Galaxy's whopping 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Will the iPhone's reign at the top of our battery test rankings continue, or will it fall short of the competition? Let's find out. All right, we'll kick things off with each phone going on a one hour phone call. Both phones are connected to the same Wi-Fi network and both are within equal distance of our mini cell tower, where after an hour, the iPhone always seems to do this, reporting 100% battery, which is literally impossible, while the Galaxy is probably giving us a more accurate result at 97%. But technically, the iPhone is ahead. However, that may change here in the messaging test, where the iPhone's battery indicator will have to start being more realistic. And after an hour of texting back and forth with our automated chatbots, okay, now we have more accurate numbers to go off of, with the iPhone draining by 6% compared to the Galaxy's 5. I'm guessing that some of that extra drain on the iPhone was really from the phone test, which for some reason the iPhone doesn't seem to report on accurately, probably in an effort to reduce battery anxiety. But either way, after an hour in email, it looks like the numbers have stabilized with the iPhone's two point advantage remaining. Now, this browser test is always one that I'm really interested in seeing because unlike the previous three, this one is more CPU intensive. We're cycling through the same set of websites and then loading each web page up, where after one hour of doing so, so the Galaxy makes the comeback, with it doing two points better. I was actually expecting the iPhone to do better in that browser test since the A17 Pro is a three nanometer chip compared to the Galaxy's four nanometer chip, but clearly that didn't seem to help. And with both phones performing identically in Instagram, we're still all tied up heading into the 16 hour standby. Where in the past, the iPhone always seemed to do better here, but recently Android phones like the Galaxy have seemed to caught up. It's partly due to optimizations and partly due to the fact that Android phones typically have bigger battery capacities, where just like against the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the Galaxy does better than the 15 Pro Max, with it taking the lead for the first time as we start working on YouTube. Now, as a reminder, the iPhone 14 Pro Max was at the same exact battery level as the 15 Pro Max here. So while the 15 Pro Max isn't offering us better performance, it's also not worse, which is exactly in line with what Apple is claiming. Worth noting here, both the screen brightness and the speed speakers on each phone have been calibrated to the same levels, so everything should be nice and fair, where after a binge watching session on YouTube, this time the iPhone does better. It wasn't by much, just a single percentage point, but it does cut down on the Galaxy's lead. And the iPhone may be able to wipe that lead out completely here in gaming, where both phones are actively playing Alto's adventure. So the phones aren't just sitting there, we're actually tapping on the screen every three seconds to more accurately represent real world usage, where one hour later, Later, no, that doesn't happen. The Galaxy not only holds onto its lead, but it increases it to its biggest one yet, pulling a full four points ahead. So the iPhone has its work cut out for it. Let's see if it could recover a bit here in Maps, where we're simulating navigation by having the GPS and the compass active, while also updating real-time traffic information, where this time the phones perform identically, each dropping by seven points. Here in Spotify, our robots are simply listening to music, and because the speed are calibrated to the same levels, at first glance, you'd expect the Galaxy and its bigger battery to have the advantage, since the main power draw is from the speakers themselves, and software optimization isn't going to play a huge role here. But hardware optimization does, and one thing that we've noticed over the years is that the Galaxy's earpiece vents are almost always thinner than the iPhones, to the point where they're basically invisible, which I've always suspected made the earpieces on the Galaxies have to work harder to pump out the same level of volume, which technically puts it at a disadvantage. I'm not 100% sure on this, but year after year, the iPhone gains the advantage, this time doing two points better. Meaning, heading into maybe the most intensive test that we have in Snapchat, the iPhone has a real shot at making a comeback. 
This Snapchat test draws power in a number of different ways, including obviously the screen, but also the selfie cameras, the microphones on each phone, and the storage as we record a clip, the speakers as it temporarily plays back that clip, and then Wi-Fi as we upload each clip to Snapchat servers. Where after an hour of doing this on repeat, the iPhone completes the comeback, taking a one point lead as we move on to App Cycle. Now, I think this is important to mention here. Any phone that makes it this far into the battery test is an A plus in my opinion. Just getting through Snapchat alone is something that most phones fail to do and surviving the App Cycle test for any period at all is impressive since we're opening all these apps up and then closing them all and then repeating that process indefinitely, which is really taxing on the chipsets. But it's seemed to be more taxing for the Galaxy, with the 15% that the Galaxy started with depleting completely after 1 hour and 6 minutes, while the iPhone is still going strong with 6% left to go, allowing it to continue on for another 38 minutes before it finally died, bringing the iPhone's total time to an impressive 27 hours and 44 minutes, which actually matches the iPhone 14 Pro Max exactly, while the Galaxy went for a little bit less at 27 hours and 6 minutes. So while it was a close one, it's a clear win for the iPhone in this battery test. Anyways, that is it for me in this video. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the very next episode.